what's going on guys and welcome back to the channel i apologize for the delay i upgraded to mac os ventura 13.0 uh, on my m1 macbook and you know what Pfft, almost nothing worked so it has been quite a fun experience getting everything going together and uh needless to say i don't know why you would upgrade uh, to a beta version, but I didn't really pay attention. So here we are, but I finally got it all up and going. Technical difficulties are at a minimal, and today we are going to get into purification of cannabinoids using reverse phase liquid chromatography. Without any further ado, let us go ahead and dive right on in to the content. Yes, exactly. Don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, bell button, notification for your boy. Now, for anybody that was watching the, uh, oh, and check out in the pinned comment to join the Discord. If you don't know about the Discord, guys, you got to find out. Even if you just try it out for one time only, the Discord is lit. There's a bunch of information there, a bunch of other chemists, and they are converting into THC. They are making distillate, vape pens, gunny, just about everything that you can think of because they have a community of chemists, including myself always on deck to be able to ask any questions so go check that out it's lit you can find it in the description right there now for everybody that has been watching the uh, oranges to how to take to make THC from orange peels this is going to be the next step in your process but also this is going to help everybody that is doing conversions elute different uh, cannabinoids faster and so I wanted to make this to give you a, a, a real understanding of chromatography how it all goes together in this specific video you can use this which is going to elute your Delta 9 first followed by your unreacted Olivetol that you can just transfer down through the rest of your throughput if you don't know what I'm talking about then go watch those videos popping up for everybody that's been in that playlist uh, so far so the pu purification of cannabinoids reverse phase I am grim this is my favorite way to use this from WKU consulting uh, this is my preferred method of chromatography now there's centrif centrifugal uh, chromatography there's single phase chromatography all types uh, re reverse phase is just the best for me might not be the best for you but you can use this method and get to where you are trying to get now for an introduction this it's going to be a long video guys so just buckle up your pants and hang tight number one compounds with greater polarity are going to elute first and we'll explain why that is in just a minute we will need a non-polar packing material uh, packing media and a polar solvent okay we are going to use c18 as our silica gel and we are also going to be using some fine sand uh, and we're going to get into that in just a minute too so one of the most important parts of column chromat chromatography is packing to prevent channeling you do not want any air bubbles going in and you also want everything to come down in a uniform fashion you do not want it to take the path of least resistance by doing improper packing and then it will channel through not filtering properly and you're going to get an inadequate separation of your bands and if you still don't understand what i'm talking about you are going to by the end of this video i promise so just hold on we will be using an ethanol water combination for our polar solvent to both dissolve the cannabinoids and elute the cannabinoids okay so think of it like this way guys think of it like this way as you come through whatever is going to react with the c18 especially since c18 is our non-polar and our solvent is polar that means the more polar our cannabinoid the faster it will move through the column so obviously the non-polar cannabinoids or the least polar cannabinoids are going to travel slower through that C18. That means that everything that is on the more polar scale is going to travel faster through our chromatography column. That is going to allow us to pick up separate fractions at different levels. So for this instance in reverse phase chromatography, this is how everything is going to elute out. First your CBD would elute, and then your Delta 9 would elute, and then your Delta 8. In the case of everybody watching this from the THC from orange peels, it would be your CBD you wouldn't have any of that but your Delta 9 would come out first and then 
and then your olivetol, your unreacted olivetol would come out. Now this is a basic um, a diagram here of how everything is going to be put together, right? So you're going to have your chromatography column, you're gonna have a stopcock, your C18, um, sorry, the sand is supposed to be pointed right there, not right there. And then you'll have your meniscus, which is everything that is going to be filtered, your solvent reservoir, which we're going to get into in just a minute, and then a gas inlet. If you wanted to use a pressurized system um, to either push your solvent through there to get a little bit faster filtration or just gravity fed will work as well. But this is how your system is going to be set up. Now, Let's get in to frit or not to frit. That is the question. Some columns are going to have glass frits, and these are just little porous, um, porous circular materials uh, to prevent the loss of the stationary phase. What is the stationary phase? Well, the stationary phase is going to be our C18 out of the bottom, right? We obviously don't want any C18 to transfer down with whatever cannabinoids that we are chromatographing, right? So uh, others do not have that frit and will need to be plugged with either glass wool or cotton wool or sand, which you use is a personal preference. Now, glass frits are harder to clean and may be a source of impurities because depending on the pore size, you might limit filtration speed or you might, the pore size is too big and you are going to just imagine a perforated disc for lack of a better word. You are going to be allowing some of that C18 to come in and cross contaminate all of the things that you are eluded. Now you may also plug the frit based on the pore size with sand. So you could do a frit and sand. I'm going to show you how to do glass wool, steel wool, um, uh, the frit, you know, if maybe the pore size is large enough for you and some sand all together. I just want to get that out of the way is you're going to come into contact with two different types of chromatography columns and you're going to have to just decide what is best for you. Now, what is best for me is I use an unfritted chromatography column and I just plug with sand. Now, let's get into correctly plugging. The size of your cotton, glass, or wool plug, see? So too small right there in the neck of the needle. Ideal is going to be right in in between being able to fill up both sides of where everything funnels down. Too large is just going to be an excessive plug that is not necessary. Now, in the bottom of your column, you will notice it starts to funnel out into a, a pinch. So just a little bit there, that is too, not enough. Ideal is going to be right in line with where everything starts to 45 off into the filtration and too much sand is just when you filled too much sand. That's all there is for lack of a better purpose. So this is a good way that you can follow this right here to correctly plug your chromatography column so that you do not have any cross contamination of the C18 right here, as everything's running through, you only want it, you only want your meniscus to run through. You don't want to transfer any of the C18, so that means you need to plug. See right here in the bottom, you will see this the, the glass wool plug as well as a little bit of sand, and that is going to create a very, very good plug to make sure that we do not cross-contaminate any of our C18 inside of the rest of our cannabinoids. Now, variable, all the variables that you're gonna need to get this done and guys this is just a simple column you can find this anywhere from small scale to large scale to medium scale uh, you can get a glass chromatography column off of Amazon for like 115 bucks as much time as you have is as much chromatography as you can use to filter now if you're trying to separate your Delta 9 from your Delta 8 this is the way that you're going to do it if you want to separate your CBD from your Delta 9 this is the way that you're going to do it so for all of those purposes which there are more chr chromatography uh, variables in play, but most of my viewers are going to be doing one of those three things. So we're going to dissolve our cannabinoids to be eluted in 190 proof ethanol at a one to one ratio. And we're just going to call this the aliquot for now. Okay. So all of our cannabinoids, let's say that we've got a liter that we want filtered, then we are going to take that liter of cannabinoids. Now this will be a combination of whatever we have converted, right? Delta nine, Delta eight, Olivetol and Delta nine, whatever that is, that's going to be that oil. And we are going to dissolve it at a one to one ratio of solvent to cannabinoids, right? So if we've got a liter, we dissolve it in a liter. Now we want this, we want this total aliquo to be no more than 10% of the volume of the column. So if we've got a 200 milliliter column, then we only want to use about 20 milliliters of aliquo at a time. Now, 
70% ethanol, 30% water will be our packing buffer. And you will see exactly what, all, these are just all variables that you're gonna need to plug in. It's not gonna totally make sense to you until the, the completion of the video, so stay tuned, right? But for our packing buffer, which is, I like to do a wet pack instead of a dry pack. Can you do a dry pack? Yes, but then you have a little bit of an issue when it comes to cleanup, and you also have a little bit of an issue when you're trying to prevent channeling, which is our bane. The bane to our chromat chromatography existence is going to be channeling. So we want to pack wet. The way that we're going to pack is to make a C18 slurry with 70% ethanol and 30% water. And don't worry, we're gonna get into those variables in just a minute. So 10% of our 200 milliliters is going to be the aliquo that we are going to introduce. Our solvent used for the process of elution is going to be 3 to 1 ethanol to water. So all of our cannabinoids are dissolved in 190 proof ethanol, right? That's what we are going to load. And it's going to all make sense, guys. Don't worry. I know it's a lot of information. But all right here, so you're going to see this in the end of the video as well. Once we get our C18, we are going to create a slurry with that 70%, 30%, right? So we want all of that to filter in and we're going to be discharging material until all of our C18 settles in a wet pack. Now, our meniscus is going to be dissolved in our 190 proof ethanol like we just went over, right? Now, the solvent that we are going to use in our solvent reservoir to continuously flush whatever we are trying to elute out of there is going to be three to one ethanol to water. Three to one ethanol to water. Ethanol, three parts, water, one part. So if we're using 100 milliliters, then 25 milliliters of that will be water. The rest will be ethanol. That is what we are going to use to flush. Now, make it happen, Captain. We are going to fill the column, and don't worry, I'm gonna got a, I got a diagram for you. I know this is a lot of information, but trust me, follow, go watch, rewatch a bunch of times, and you are going to get this down. You can do this. I believe in you. You can do this. You can do this. Fill the column about one third of the way with 190 proof ethanol. That's going to be our solvent allow some to discharge through the sand to reduce air bubbles and channeling okay so right now the only thing we have in our chromatography unit is just going to be our plug and our sand we are going to fill the column about a third of the way with our 190 proof ethanol and we are just going to discharge some of it to through the sand and through that that plug to make sure that we don't have any air bubbles or, cha or channeling so that's what we're going to wet pack our sand in our plug with to make sure everything's just right when we begin filtration next we're going to create our c18 slurry in 70 percent ethanol to 30 percent water remember using a 10 to 1 ratio of c18 to aliquo so in, for example if we've got one liter C18, then we are going to use 100 milliliters of aliquo. Remember, that is what our ethanol and our cannabinoids dissolved in it are going to be. Just know that everything at a one-to-one -one cannabinoids to ethanol ratio. So our aliquo is at a one-to-one -one cannabinoids to ethanol. And our slurry, our slurry is going to be 10 to 1 of whatever cannabinoids that we've got in there. So if we have for instance, let's say that we've got 500 grams of cannabinoid oil that we are going to, to do. Then we want to use 5,000 grams of C18 in our slurry, right? So we want to make our slurry. Now, the amount of slurry that you have doesn't really matter. You just want to make sure that your grams are right because you're not going to retain a bunch of that liquid in your chromatography column. You are going to let it charge through the chromatography column until all of it settles. Our solvent slurry is going to be 1.5 to 1 solvent and C18. Add C18 to solvent a little bit at a time using a pipette pipette to mix adequately between addition. Okay, so from our C18, let's say that once again, we've got our uh, 5,000 grams of C18. That is approximately five liters right there, you know, of solvent that we want to mix in there. So we want to have a good amount of solvent and we just want to, as we're adding, let's say 100 grams, 100 grams, 100 grams of our C18 to our solvent, we want to make sure that we are mixing. Then we're just going to pour that slurry into our chromatography column, allowing the solvent to drain to prevent overflowing. We're going to add a little slurry, tap and drain, add a little slurry, tap and drain, and then we're going to use our pipette to rinse any silica attached to the walls of the column. Drain the solvent level until the solvent level, until the level is just even with the stationary phase. Let me show you what I mean here. 
Okay, so here's the bottom of our chromatography column. Here we have our sand. We put a little bit of our solvent through first. That's our 190 proof ethanol. We put a little bit through and then we open that stopcock to allow it to dissolve. We just want to make sure that we are not getting any air bubbles or any channeling in the bottom of our plug here that we just created. Okay, so once we get that done, we are ready to add our slurry that we just created in the previous slide. We're going to add our slurry. We're going to tap, 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 and then we we are going to discharge uh, until that slurry level comes down. Add our slurry, tap, 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 discharge until the slurry level comes down. Making sure that any little bit of C18 that gets stuck to the side of this chromatography column is being rinsed down with a little pipette, right? Little beep, 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 beep. Little pipette that we are going to rinse the side with just a little bit of residual ethanol to make sure that nothing's sticking to our walls. So we are just going to add our slurry pipe in or pour in and then tap and discharge as long as it takes as long as it takes see we're tapping everything's coming down you'll start to see all the c18 settling it'll begin to settle 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 it's settling you're discharging more solvent you don't want that solvent layer too high it'll be settling 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 until until our slurry our uh, c18 is just 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 even, right? Just, just even with the solvent level and the C18. Everything's packed nice in line with that in our sand. So all of our C18 that's in our, our slurry, you know, is just going to be right there with that solvent level. Very, 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 very nicely, right? So we want a nice, wet, uniform, even, everything is packed down perfectly and that's how we know that our column is adequately packed now topping the column next we want to top the packed bed with an inch or less of glass wool sand cotton or similar inert filter material this is going to protect the top of the bed from being deformed when liquids are poured on top of it we are now ready to load our column and isolate the desired compound now what do i mean by that Okay, here you go. So here's your solvent line, right? We discharged the solvent line until it was right in line with our C18 slurry. And our C18 slurry is nice and undisturbed. Everything's been packed down very well. Now we want to go ahead and add us just a glass wool filter bed. So when we pour our aliquo in there, it has to transfer through the glass wool and it doesn't find a gravitational force that makes it channel through one side or another based on how much mass is penetrating the C18 slurry. We want an even distribution and our packing buffer is going to make sure that we do not disturb the head of our packed bed there that we just created, right? We took so much time creating it. Now we have to be very careful about what we're doing to make sure as to not disturb that because once again, the disturbance in the channeling is the bane of our chrom chromatography existence. Okay, now we are ready for elution. Now we are ready for elution. Now in our solvent here, we have our three to one ethanol and water ratio. Now it is best to use some sort of UV wavelength for detection of sample cuts to determine relative concentration of cannabinoids versus time. And we're just going to collect and test our fractions as they come out. We're just going to be collecting each fraction as the band separates and then sending those to solvent recovery to recover all of the solvent that was in our, our, our slurry as well as all the solvent that we used to flush. Okay. Okay, so right here, imagine, here you have your C18 slurry and your solvent line, here you've got your sand and your plug, and here you've got your bed that you created from glass wool. Now you're just going to, after you've charged, you've poured all of your aliquots, so all of the cannabinoids that you've got uh, dissolved in your ethanol, you've poured it all in here. Now you can use this solvent, this three-in-one ethanol and water, to go ahead and begin bringing all of that through the filtration column. All of that through the filtration column and we are just going to collect and test our fractions as we send them out like i said cbd delta 9 delta 8 those are what's going to come out if you're doing the thc from oranges delta 9 unreacted olivetol this is how it's going to come out in that order now you are going to see some band resolution now band resolution here is our loaded sample so all of our aliquo this is our stationary phase all of the c18 this is our mobile phase which is going to be the three to one ethanol and water that we just talked about right so 
your stronger reactions and your weaker reactions, right? So the more polar, the mo more polar everything is, the faster it's going to run through. So in this case, our band resolution is going to be our CBD here. Now, as our delta nine is interacting with that stationary nonpolar phase more heavily than the CBD, it's going to stay behind. Now we're going to be able to see this. So we're gonna start create, uh, collecting our fractions, right? And there might be residual cannabinoids of each one in those fractions as we're going there. But our bands are going to start to be resolving and this is going to be ocular. You're going to be able to see this to an extent. It's much better if you've got a UV wave meter here because that's really going to emphasize all of those bands as they begin to separate. But our weaker interactions, we'll be able to see them coming down. Okay, well, we know that as our weaker in in interaction band is starting to move towards the bottom of our chromatography column and we're discharging those into a beaker, we know that we are going to be primarily and always test, test data to back everything up. We know that we are going to be eluding first those CBD molecules out first, right? So we can collect those, discharge them, whatever. Or in, if, in the case that we're doing Delta 9 and Delta 8, we'll be collecting our Delta 9 first. Now the Delta 8 is going to be coming out after and we'll be able to see that resolved band coming out as well. And that's going to be our eluded molecules or in the THC from oranges type thing, we're going to be looking at Delta 9 and then the unreacted olivetol. And you'll be able to see that moving through that glass column. That's why I really, really, really like the um, the glass chromatography better than, let's say, the steel chromatography or something like that because you will be able to see the resolution bands. Now, another pro tip is to attach some sort of vibration uh, mechanism to help um, when you're adding your slurry to get an even pack. That helps a lot too. You can get UV light meters to kind of give you a better resolution of bands so you have a better understanding of when your resolved bands are coming through, how your, your material is eluding, um, and then how you're collecting your different fractions, right? And also you want to back test any one of those fractions coming in and depending on the size of your column, the amount of pressure that you've got, how you're feeding it, I can't give you a one-step catches-all answer to how long this takes. But if you're doing the same thing over and over again with the same SOP in your same chromatography column, you are going to be able to compile data for yourself to let you know, hey, it takes me about an hour and a half to elute all of the CBD. After that, it takes me another 45 minutes to elute all of the residual Delta 9. Bam, 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 bam. And then you will have a better SOP and data for you to go by when you're using. Now, there's a couple of different medias that you can use. I like to use C18. Carbon Chemistry has a bunch of different filtration medias that you can use. Um, I like them. I use them often. Um, you know, not sponsored by them in any way, shape, or form. I'm just saying if you're looking for those different materials, there are some C18 can get expensive and it's not necessarily reusable. Um, very, you know, it doesn't have a regenerative effect. So there are some other medias out there uh, some proprietary medias that are being unveiled uh, that claim that you can reuse them. I just do not have any information on those for you at this time. Now, I hope that this has been informative for you. It has been a blessing, a privilege, nay, an honor to be able to teach and consult with you guys. Guys, if you have any individual questions like this, get in that Discord community because we are answering questions like nonstop, teaching a whole bunch of people that have no chemistry background. Some people do have chemistry background how to get started and compete in the industry. And guys, they are creating products that straight up slap. So we want to get you in on that as well. So reach out there, find us there. See you all in the next video. Peace out.